I reported recently on the Australian government's plan to reduce emissions in traffic in vehicles by around 43% by 2030. Well, now the New Zealand government has come up with their own plan, and this is what it's all about. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. If you'd like to, I'll put my Patreon link in the description below if you want to support the channel. would really appreciate having you as that's what enables me to produce these videos and keep this happening. Big thank you to our current Patreon supporters. Thank you very, very much. The New Zealand government in May 2022 adopted its first emissions reduction plan. This is a document required under the Climate Change Response Act to help achieve net zero CO2 by 2050 domestically and the global effort to limit temperature rise to 1.5 Celsius. This document sets out carbon budgets, numerous targets, and many actions out to 2035 across all sectors in the New Zealand economy. For transport, it sets a target of 41% reduction of CO2 from 2019 levels and agrees to four targets. Target number one, reduced total kilometers traveled by the fleet by 20% by 2035 through improved urban form and providing better travel options, particularly in New Zealand's larger cities. Target number two, increase zero emissions vehicles to 30% of the light fleet by 2035. This relies on approximately 1.5 million zero emission vehicles being purchased from now to 2035. Target three, reduce emissions from freight transport by 35% by 2035. And target four, reduce the emissions intensity of transport fuel by 10% by 2035. Now, in order to make all this happen, they're agreeing to implement 100 things, 100 different actions to make these targets actually work and to make this plan actually a reality. Now, recent levels of electric vehicle sales have risen dramatically in New Zealand following the introduction of rebates from July 2021 and a wider scheme of rebates on other low emission vehicles and fees on high emission vehicles from April of 2022. The top selling electric vehicle in New Zealand right now, easily by far, is the Tesla Model 3. The amount of rebate on a brand new electric vehicle is approximately US $5,600. That's a lot of money. And the maximum fee on a high emissions vehicle is a little over US $3,000. So I like the way New Zealand is doing it. I think it makes sense. The reality is by polluting the environment, it does cost. It costs the government money, it costs healthcare money, it costs money for a range of different things. So you should pay to pollute and you should get money back if you're not going to pollute. So I like it. $3,000 US dollars if you're gonna be a big polluter, $5,600 incentive to get an electric car in New Zealand. You can look up the amount of rebate or the fees on a vehicle purchase by clicking in the description below. I'll put a link in the description that shows you the page where all of that information is located. From 2023, vehicle distributors will be required to achieve annually improved CO2 targets, which by 2026 will rival and then be stricter than those currently enacted by the EU and the US. A comparison of those targets is in the description below as well. Now, if you include plug-in hybrids right now, then the largest selling manufacturer of plug-in vehicles is Mitsubishi. But if you don't include plug-in hybrids, then it's Tesla by big, big margin, in fact. So if we do include plug-in hybrids, though, Mitsubishi first place, then Tesla second, Hyundai third, and MG in fourth. Now, as you would know, MG is now Chinese owned. They make electric cars. And the MG ZS EV is a very, very hot selling electric car here in Australia. There's a new model coming out, which is a lot better than the older version. It's got a lot more range. That's a big seller in New Zealand as well. So that gives you an idea of how Chinese vehicles are starting to be sold in Australia, New Zealand, and other countries as well. And remember, the Tesla Model 3, right? The big selling Tesla Model 3 in New Zealand, where's that manufactured? That's also manufactured in China, of course. Now in fifth place is Kia, and in sixth is Polestar. Polestar, obviously another Chinese owned company. Then Mercedes-Benz, followed by BMW, Nissan, Peugeot, Mini, Lexus, Audi, Skoda, LDV, Jaguar, Volvo, Porsche. Toyota is nearly last, incredible. So personally, I think great work, New Zealand. 
on these new rules. It's fantastic. Can they do more? Absolutely they can. I think probably people are a little bit pessimistic right now. It's very, very hard to see exponential growth. Exponential growth is just something the human mind doesn't really fully understand. So it's very difficult to see how our actions today will directly affect how things will turn out in 2050, right? But realistically, I don't think anyone in New Zealand will be buying anything but electric cars in 2035. So we could be a little bit more aggressive with the way we're looking at adoption of electric cars in New Zealand and of course in Australia as well. In my opinion, the Australian government's claims that they're going to be supporting the electric revolution and clean energy are not really borne out by their recent statements, which uh, don't really go far enough to address the issue and support renewable energy. That's my opinion. However, I think New Zealand here with this 100 point plan is doing more than Australia. At least they plan on doing more anyway. And the other thing to remember is their incentives and penalties for polluting right now for buying an electric car, right? The incentives are a lot higher in New Zealand and you get penalized for buying high polluting cars. Now, Australia should adopt a system like this. We don't have one. There is no plan to adopt one. Our states just seem to be rogue. Victoria does whatever it wants. New South Wales does whatever it wants. It doesn't seem as though our prime minister has any power whatsoever. I think this should be changed. I think we need to have a national policy on electric cars and on cars that are high polluting vehicles. Now, if you're going to go and buy a vehicle with a a seven liter V8 engine when you don't need to, and yes, you're going to cause economic damage, there's no doubt about it, then you should have to pay for that privilege. That is not any part of Australia's plan. And it's obviously something that it should be. New Zealand can do it. Why can't Australia do it as well? Maybe politicians think that uh, it won't win them any votes with certain parts of the demographic. I don't know. But in my view, this New Zealand policy is far better than Australia's And our Australian government needs to have a damn good look at it and work out how they can implement some parts of that, which obviously are going to work well. Now, that's my view. Kudos to New Zealand. That's what I'm here to say. New Zealand, you're on the right track. Congratulations. And hey, give our prime minister a call. Show them what you're doing. You never know. Maybe we'll get some changes here in Australia, which we definitely need. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or you disagree. Am I crazy or am I on the right track? Have a great day.